So on this example, we want to solve the exponential equation 6 to the x over 5 equals 11. Now when we solve an exponential equation, there are three main methods that we go to. The three methods are relating the bases, which are to try to make the bases the same, converting to a log, or taking the log of both sides. The first method of relating the bases we're not going to be able to use because we have a base of 6 on the left and a base of 11 on the right. We're not going to be able to make those bases the same. So I'm going to show you the other two methods. Both of them will work on this example. So those are to convert to a log or to take the log of both sides. Okay, so here's showing you how to convert. So if we solve this by converting, converting to a log, we're going to write the word log. And we need to use the base of the exponential as the base of the log. So we have a log base 6. Now the reason that we use logs here is because logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. Inverses switch the input and the output. So in our exponential equation, we have an input of x over 5 and an output of 11. So for logs, which is the inverse, that input and output get switched. So the output of 11 becomes the input of the log. So I'm going to put the 11 as the input of the log. And the output of the log becomes the input, x over 5. So now I have this equation, log base 6 of 11 equals x over 5. And then I'm going to solve this equation by getting x by itself. I have x over 5. I'll multiply by 5 on both sides. And that gives x equals 5 log base 6 of 11. This would be our answer in its exact form. Um, you may need to answer it in decimal form. So I have a calculator here. Let me clear all the buttons. So we have a fresh screen. And this calculator has a log button where we can type any base. So I can use math. I'm going to go to the bottom of the list. So I hit up. And this is the function log base that allows me to specify any base. So that is log base 6 of 11. And then I need to multiply this whole thing by 5. And this is the decimal approximation for our answer here, 6.69. Let's write that. x is 6.69. That's approximately 6.69. Now maybe your calculator doesn't have that third button. Some calculators only have buttons for log, which is base 10, and uh, LN, natural log, which is base E. So if your calculator has only those two buttons, then you'll need to use the change of base formula to put it in your calculator. So you have 5 log base 6 of 11 with the change of base formula that's 5 natural log of 11 over natural log of 6. And we'll type that in the calculator as well so that you can see you get the same answer. 5 and the natural log button here is on the home screen. It's not hidden like that third button was hidden in a menu. So I'm doing 5 natural log of 11 
over natural log of 6. And you should see we get the same decimal approximation, that 6.69. So that's how you would solve this equation if you're going to use the method of converting. Now let me show you how to use the other method, which is to take the log of both sides. So we're going to start with 6 to the x over 5 equals 11. We've got our exponential isolated on one side of the equation. So we're going to do natural log on the left and natural log on the right. When we do the natural log on both sides, it introduces the log, which introduces log properties. And one of the log properties, called the power rule, allows us to move this exponent to the coefficient. So it's getting that variable out of the exponent. So we have x over 5 natural log of 6 equals natural log of 11. And now I can start solving for x now that it's no longer in the exponent. Let's get rid of that 5 by multiplying by 5 on both sides. The 5's cancel on the left, and we get x natural log of 6 equals 5 natural log 11. And I'm going to divide both sides by natural log of 6. If I divide both sides by natural log of 6, the natural log of 6 will cancel out on the left, leaving me with x. And on the right, I have 5 natural log of 11 over natural log of 6. And hopefully you can see that this is the same uh, expression that we typed in the calculator just a moment ago. And that's one of the advantages of this method of taking the log of both sides, is when you take the log of both sides and you use natural log, you will have natural log in your answer, and it's usually easier to type that in your calculator because the natural log is on your home screen. So we get that same decimal approximation of 6.69 with this method. So on this question, we want to solve the logarithmic equation, log base 5 of x plus 2 plus log of base 5 of x minus 2 equals 1. So this is a log equation. We've got a variable inside the log. And there are two main methods that we use for solving log equations. Uh, the two methods are to convert to an exponential or to use the property of equality. Now, with these methods, you typically can only use one of them based on how the equation looks. So when you're converting, what you're looking for is each term. Terms are separated by pluses. So here I have a term with a log. Here I have a term with a log. And then I have a term without a log. So when you want to use the method of converting, you should have some logs. And that's what we have in this example here. When you use the property of equality, you are going to have all logs with the same base. So that's going to be your key for when to use which of these methods, some logs versus all logs. So here, because we have this term here without a log, that means we have some logs, but not all logs. So we're going to use the method of converting.
Now, when you convert, you need to have a log only on one side. So I need to condense these logs together. So I'm going to condense using the product rule. That becomes log base 5 of x plus 2 times x minus 2. So the reason why I need to use the product rule here is because I'm adding logs with the same base. And I did the product here. If I were subtracting logs with the same base, I would use the quotient rule and I would divide those two expressions in the log. So because I was adding, I used the product rule. And now that I've condensed this down to a single log, I'm going to do my conversion, converting to an exponential. I'm going to use the base of the log as the base of the exponential. So we have a base of 5. The reason why we convert to an exponential is because exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other. Inverses switch the inputs and the outputs. So this x plus 2 times x minus 2 is the input of the log, and 1 is the output of the log. So when the inputs and the outputs get switched, 1 becomes the input of the exponent, and x plus 2 times x minus 2 becomes the output of the exponential. So that gives us the equation 5 to the first power equals x plus 2 times x minus 2. 5 to the first power is 5. Let's go ahead and multiply. x times x is x squared. x times minus 2, that's minus 2x. Two, 2 times x, that's 2x. And 2 times negative 2 is minus 4. We'll combine like terms. The x squared, the minus 2x and plus 2x cancel each other out. Now I have 5 equals x squared minus 4. I can solve this by isolating the x squared. I'll add 4 to both sides. That's x squared equals 9. x squared equals 9 can be solved by taking the square root of both sides. The square root and the square cancel each other out, but you pick up a plus or minus symbol on the other side. Square root of 9 is 3. We've got two solutions here, a positive 3 and a negative 3. However, you need to be careful here because log expressions have restricted domains. So you have to check your work. You're going to check x equals 3 in the original. That's log base 5 of 3 plus 2 plus log base 5 of 3 minus 2 equals 1. And what you're checking for is to make sure that the expression inside the log is positive. 3 plus 2 is positive, 3 minus 2 is positive, so we'll be able to keep that solution of x equals 3. Let's check the other solution. Let's check x equals negative 3. In the original, log is 5 of negative 3 plus 2 plus log base 5 of negative 3 minus 2 equals 1. And what we notice here, negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. Negative 3 minus 2 is a negative log of a negative is undefined. So we have to throw that solution away. So the only solution that we have for this equation
is x equals positive 3. So this is one of our application of exponential functions questions. We have the population of a Midwest industrial town decreased from 224,000 to 220,000 in just three years. Assuming that this trend continues, what will the population be after an additional four years? So when you have these types of problems, you're usually given a little bit of information, which is meant to help you find the growth or decay rate, and then you're asked a question which asks you to go a little bit further or ask a different type of question. So this information at the beginning about the population decreasing is meant to help you find that K. And then once you find the K, then we'll be able to use that K to answer this question that's given to us. So let's um, take a look at this formula that we need. This is the population growth or decay formula. Um, it's P of T equals P naught E to the KT. So I want to make sure you know what these different variables stand for. P naught is the initial population, starting population, population at time zero. I just phrase it a few different ways so that you know what it represents. And we have K. K is the growth or decay rate. T, this variable T and the exponent is time, and it can be any unit of time. In this problem, we see years, three years and four years. Um, we can use any unit of time, but we want to be consistent. So this problem is being consistent with the units. And then the P on the left-hand side, that's your population, your ending population, or your population after a period of time. So when we use this information at the beginning, 224,000 is our starting population, and it decreases to 220,000. So we can use um, P as 220,000, that's our ending population, and P naught as the 224,000, that's our starting population. So this is our start, this is our end. And then that time period of three years, t equals three. So if we take a look at our formula with this information in mind, we have p of t equals p naught e to the kt. We have P, the ending population. We have P naught, the starting population, and we have a time. The only missing variable is the K. We're going to be able to solve for K, the decay rate. And this is going to be a decay rate because the population is decreasing. If it were increasing, it would be a growth rate. So to solve for that K, we're going to plug these numbers into our formula and start solving. So if we plug into the formula, we have 220,000 equals 224,000 E to the K times 3. I'm going to divide both sides by 224,000.
we get e to the 3k equals, and I can reduce this, I can probably reduce it more, but I know I can reduce those zeros, 220,000 over 224,000. And let's see if we can reduce that even more. I know that 4 should go into both of them. So 220 divided by 4 is 55. That's e to the 3k equals 55. Let's see, 224 divided by 4, that's 56. Okay, from here, I can solve my exponential equation by doing the natural log on both sides. Natural log of e to the 3k equals natural log of 55 over 56. Natural log and e are inverses of each other, so they'll cancel. I'll have 3k equals natural log of 55 over 56. I'll divide both sides by 3. And k equals natural log of 55 over 56 over 3. And now that I have my k, I can answer this question. Assuming that this trend continues, what will the population be after an additional four years? Now you can set this part up in a couple different ways. Depending on how you or which starting value you use. So if you use P naught as 224,000, you want, so 224,000 is from the beginning. And remember, three years went by and we went down to 220,000 another four years goes by. So if you're going to use 224,000, you need to use a time of 4 plus 3, which is 7. So you need to do the original three years plus the four years. However, if you decide to use 220,000, you could just do a time of the additional four years. I'm going to show you that both of these work out the same. So you're going to use your formula, P of T equals P naught E to the KT. That would be P of 7 equals 224,000 E. And you're going to use the K that you just worked out. And notice I did not put this in my calculator. I don't want to round until the very end. So I don't want to get a decimal answer for this rate because then I'll have rounding error when I put it in my calculator. So that's 224,000 E to the natural log of 55 over 56 over 3 times 7. If I use the other starting population, it would look like this. P of 4 equals 220,000 E to the natural log of 55 over 56 over 3 times 4. So let's type both those in the calculator. And one thing I do when I type these in my calculator is I move this multiplication to the front. If I move it to the front, I don't need to use as many parentheses and it's a little bit easier to type it in the calculator. So actually what I'm typing in the calculator 
is 224,000e to the 7. I put the 7 in the front. Natural log of 55 over 56. I need parentheses around these. And then I divide by 3. So for the other one, it would be 220,000. E, I put the 4 in front, 4 natural log, 55 over 56, over 3. Okay, so let's type these in. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. All right, we have 224,000 E to the 7. Let's move this over a little bit more. 7 natural log of 55 over 56 divided by 3. So in an additional four years, our population would continue to decline to 214,777. And depending on how we round, we would round that up. If we round to the nearest whole number, it would be 78. 214,778. Now let's see the other one. So if we did it the other way, we should get the same answer. 220,000 E to the 4 natural log of 55 over 56 over 3. And you can see we get the same answer here. 214,778. Now I'm going to zoom out here so you can see just the big picture of what we did. We used some of the information to figure out the growth rate. Once we figured out the growth rate, we could answer our question. So on this example, we want to solve the logarithmic equation 2 natural log x minus natural log of 3x minus 8 equals natural log of 7x minus natural log of x plus 6. So when I look at this log equation, I'm paying attention to each term. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. So I have a term of 2 natural log x, a term of natural log of 3x minus 8, a term of natural log of 7x, and a term of natural log of x plus 6. So you'll notice that every one of these terms has a natural log in it. So because they all have logs, all the terms have logs, I'm going to use the property of equality. And the property of equality looks something like this. If you have log base b of u equals log base b of v, so if I have logs on both sides with the same base, this property says that what is inside the logs must be equal to each other. So because all of my terms have logs, that what that's what tells me to use this property of equality. But before I can use the property of equality, I need to have a single log on the left and a single log on the right. So I'm going to start with my condensing properties. I'm going to condense to a single log on the left and condense to a single log on the right. So I've got to start with this coefficient. 
That coefficient becomes the power using the power rule. So I have natural log of x squared minus natural log of 3x minus 8 equals natural log of 7x minus natural log of x minus 6. And then I have subtraction between these logs. And when you have subtraction between logs with the same base, you can use the quotient rule. So using the quotient rule, the left-hand side becomes natural log of x squared over 3x minus 8. And the right side becomes natural log of 7x over x minus 6. So now I have a single log on the left and a single log on the right. And I can use that property of equality. What's inside the log on the left equals what's inside the log on the right. So x squared over 3x minus 8 will equal 7x over x minus 6. x squared over 3x minus 8 is equal to 7x over x minus 6. So I have this rational equation to solve. And I'm going to solve, since I have one fraction on the left and one fraction on the right, I'm going to use um, cross multiplication. So cross multiplication, you take the numerator on one side times the denominator on the other, and vice versa. We get x squared times x minus 6 equals 7x times 3x minus 8. Let's use the distributive property. That's x cubed minus 6x squared equals 21x squared minus 56x. I'm going to move all the terms to the same side. So now we have a cubic equation or a polynomial equation. So I want to move all the terms to the same side. I'm going to subtract 21x squared. That's x cubed minus 27x squared equals negative 56x. I'm going to add 56x on both sides. And that gives me the equation x cubed minus 27x squared plus 56x equals 0. Now I can start solving this polynomial equation by factoring. I have x's in all three terms. I'll factor out the x. And that gives x times x squared minus 27x plus 56 equals 0. And now I'm going to try to factor the quadratic inside. I know that x times x is x squared, giving me the correct front term. Now let's see if we can figure out the back. Okay, let me think of factors of 56. Okay, 56 is 1 times 56, 2 times, okay, 2 goes into 56, 28, okay, how about 3, 3 does not go in there, how about 4, 56 divided by 4 is 14. And then, let's see, 6 doesn't go in there. 7 times 8. And I think those are all the factors of 56. So, looking at those pairs, what I'm looking for is if I can get the right middle number. So I'm adding and subtracting these pairs 
to see if I can get the right middle number and none of them add up to be that middle number that I'm looking for. So since none of those pairs add up to the right middle number, that means I can't solve this quadratic by factoring. I've got to use the square, uh, excuse me, I've got to use the quadratic formula. Um, before I use the quadratic formula, I just want to double check my work to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Sometimes I write the wrong numbers down, and sometimes I'll lose my sign. So I'm just going to double check that first. So I've got x squared over 3x minus 8. That looks good. 7x over x. So look at that. I did mess up right there. I put a plus 6, or excuse me, it was a plus 6, and I changed it to a minus 6. Okay, so I've got to go back and fix um, my mistake. Let's see, is it a quick fix? That is a... Let's see if it's a quick fix. So this should be a plus plus, a plus, this is a plus here. Okay, so this number is going to change. This is not going to be a negative 27 anymore. So 21 minus 6 is 15, and it will be a negative 15. So this is a negative 15 here. And now that that middle number is a negative 15, I do have a pair of numbers that will work for me. Negative 7 plus negative 8 is the right pair. So I don't have to use the quadratic formula on this one. So I'll have minus... 7 and minus 8. We can set each of these factors equal to 0. x equals 0. x minus 7 equals 0. x minus 8 equals 0. x equals 0. x equals 7. And x equals 8. Now with log equations, you need to check your work. So let's check all three of these solutions and make sure it works in the original. So if we check x equals 0 in the original, I see it's not going to work right here. That'll give me 2 natural log of 0. Natural log of 0 is undefined, so we have to throw that solution away. Okay, then let's check x equals 7. I've got 2 natural log of 7. That's okay. Log of a positive is defined. Minus natural log of 3 times 7 minus 8. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 8 will be 13. And that's log of a positive. We have equals natural log of 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is a positive. Natural log of 7 plus 6, that's natural log of 13, that's a positive. So I'm going to be able to keep that solution of 7. Okay, now how about 8? Let's check 8. So we have a natural log, excuse me, 2 natural log of 8 minus natural log of 3 times 8 minus 8. These are both positives. We can keep it so far. Natural log of 7 times 8, that's a positive, minus natural log of 8 plus 6, that's a positive. So we're going to be able to keep that solution of 8 as well. So this log equation has two solutions, 8 and 7.
Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.